Welcome everyone to KOMU 8's opening tip-off, our new show here, Brian. It's, Good to see uh, you. It's very here. exciting. Yeah, I'm yeah. Brian Mortensen. Thank you for uh, joining us tonight. We're going to take a look at all of the, we're going to preview all the, the basketball districts and fill you in on all the high school hoops action from around mid-Missouri. Yeah, and district time really getting going and even beyond district, some teams have advanced now. Let's take a look. Let's go back and take a look at playoff action. The teams eliminated some big surprises so far. Absolutely. The Rockbridge Bruins were defeated. Really a big surprise to see them go down. They were number one in their district, and uh, they were also no, uh, in the top ten in the state. So really to see them go down was quite a surprise. They also obviously have Mizzou prospect slash signee Ricky Kreklo. So to see them lose with the future Tiger on the squad is a little bit of a surprise to a lot of people in mid-Missouri. And uh, certainly they didn't... Uh, they put up a fight, they only lost by one, but uh, that was a bit of a surprise to see them go down like that. It was, certainly, with Kreklo and, and some of the big power powers that they have over there. So, But Hickman advanced to the uh, district final against Holt after Lyle Harris comes up with the clutch basket against Troy. And now obviously that was a huge basket for Hickman, and that, that was a, an incredible game too when you go back and look at that because it was tight back and forth all, way, all the way. And, uh, and then, of course, Hickman goes on and ends up losing in, uh, in the next game also by a very close margin uh, in overtime, I believe. So um, that, uh, that was incredible. That was a very good game, uh, all, all around very good. But Hickman's going to be pretty good in the future. John Burns, obviously a great coach, uh, proved it in his first year there. And Lyle Harris is a tremendous athlete as well. So they'll, they'll be okay in the future, and they've got a good stepping stone to build on for, for where to go from here. Yeah, very surprising after the emotion of that first win to go down the way they did to suffer almost the opposite effect in that in that final game so tough yeah. one for the QP certainly but uh, they like you said they'll be back oh yeah oh yeah no, no doubt no doubt and uh, so now I mean th but at the same time uh, we'll, we'll look at the, at the rest of some of the uh, uh, the teams that are remaining in um, in uh, in the boys bracket at least. Uh, undefeated Sturgeon, they're 25 and 0. And Fayette at 19 and 5. Blair Oaks at 18 and 5. Then in class one, Pilot Grove 23 and 3. Glasgow uh, 16 and 5. Higby 17 and 4. Keatsville and La Plata also <laughs> in their own district. So that'll be uh, the, a lot of good teams out there that are uh, you know going to have to separate themselves from the pack if they want to get to Missoula Arena. Yeah, great basketball all across the state and around mid Missouri definitely so oh, far this season. Absolutely. Especially as the season winds down. <laughs> No, oh, there you go. I know. I agree. It's uh, and and of course a lot of them are, are this week and uh, and of course you know great action all around. Right. So. Um, and equally as good as the girls' side of things, some some good surprises and some local teams still alive. The big one coming up in Class Five is Rockbridge versus Jefferson City. They've played each other already this year, and Rockbridge won 39 to 34. And it was in this game that the Truman State bound Amaya Williams got it going early for Rockbridge. She nailed a three. Then on the ensuing possession, Williams with a long two. The Bruins got off to a fast start. They lead by two at the half as Jeff City coach Shane Meyer wants more out of his team in the second half. While the Shake Your Tail Feather girls performed at halftime, the Lady Jays responded. Megan Johnson hits the long two. And the Lady Jays would be red hot from three point range in the second half. Kelsey Kaufman drains a three as Jill Nagel urges her team on. One minute to go, Bruins up by two, and Jeff City trying to get the lead, but Lauren Coons misses the three. Bruins get the ball back, and Amaya Williams would be calm and cool at the line as the Bruins would hold on for a 39-34 win. So, so, Brian, definitely Rockbridge is a great team. Jefferson City probably going to have their hands full against Rockbridge. I know you've seen their girls play lately, yeah. and they've looked pretty good. Yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're pretty solid all around. Uh, Amaya Williams, obviously the real star of that team. I mean, she's, she's just a real uh, gutsy player. She's up and down the court. She's taking hits. She's you know, very physical, too, for a guard. Uh, obviously, she's headed to Truman State next year to play basketball. Uh, and she's she's really the leader of that team. I mean, you see her on the court, and it's just incredible to watch because it's so much fun to see her play. And then the rest of the team too. They they really rally around her, and so uh, it, it's it's fun. Jill Nagel's squad uh, definitely uh, has a, a a real winner in her, and, and I think they're going to be tough to beat. But Jeff City did play them pretty well yeah. uh, in the second half of that game they played earlier this year. They uh, they were held scoreless in the first quarter, if I remember correctly, and uh, so they. Uh, and that really hurt them down the stretch and losing by five. So uh, things could go uh, 
the Jays way. You never know. Yeah, definitely. It'll so. be a classic rivalry, Jefferson oh. City, Columbia. Gotta, <laughs> gotta love that one. Oh. And I'll be down there uh, tomorrow night in Union for the Jefferson City Rockbridge girls game and, of course, the Jefferson City boys game. So we have that to look forward to. Also in girls play, Moberly takes on St. Dominic. The Moberly boys and girls are both playing in Jefferson City Wednesday night. And the Moberly girls play St. Dominic. Moberly girls, their first district title in 29 years. They won last Friday against Mexico. Pretty good scene up there at the Moberly Area Community College. <laughs> Fitzsimmons John Arena was going pretty crazy for the Moberly girls. Um, a big deal for them. They're a really good team. Of course, winning their first district title in 29 years, have some good players, and they seem to have really turned it around. So I'm looking forward to that one tomorrow night in Jefferson City. Of course, of course. And on the boys' side as well, uh, Brendan Hughes is back in action. So that's uh, that's pretty exciting for uh, the Spartans because he's, I mean, he is the heart and soul of that team. And of course, just like Amaya Williams of Rockbridge, and uh, you know, he uh, obviously had to sit out for a little while because of some discipline issues. But you know, he. Uh, you know, he was one of the top five scorers in Missouri, and now that he's back in action, that Moberly team, watch out. Right. But, uh, but they're, uh, obviously, Moberly's not the only good uh, girls basketball team out there. We've got a couple other ones uh, as well in in, uh, in the region. Class 3, Herman, 23-3 uh, and three as well. They've got Shelby Winkleman. She's bound to play at Nebraska Volleyball. And, I mean, that, that in itself is an accomplishment. So to see her on the basketball court, that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, the Bearcats, again, 23-3. and three. Uh, and uh, but up in up in uh, Northeast Boone County though, there uh, <laughs> there's another uh, girls basketball team that's uh, still alive. Yeah, the Centralia girls are still alive at fi five and thirteen, but they face twenty two and three Bowling Green in the same district. North Callaway at eight eight and eighteen is set to play Ellsbury. No question, no question. But then in just a few miles down the road from Centralia and just obviously a little bit up the road from Columbia, the Hallsville Indians and uh, the California Lady Pintos at 19-2. Uh, okay, so we've shown you some of the highlights so far of some of the games that have taken place and previewed some of the games coming up. But uh, we're going to do a pretty fun segment now, which we borrowed the idea from the football guys who held this spot during the fall, Brandon Spiegel most notably, who did Spiegel Selections. And we're going to keep that going with basketball on the high school tip-off show. I'm going to do a Metzold's Matchups uh, segment. So let's find out who are going to be the winners for the first week. Okay, not a big slate for the first week. I'm going to try and ease into things. I do think the Holt boys, though, will beat the Jefferson City boys in Class 5. I think in Class 4, Moberly will beat St. Dominic with the help of Brennan Hughes for the Spartans. I think Elias will beat Boulevard in what should be a pretty close game. In girls' action, I think Rockbridge should beat Jefferson City. And I think St. Dominic will end a good season for the Moberly girls. So that's it for our first basketball preview. Be sure to watch KOMU8 Sports for all of the highlights of the basketball tournament games. And be sure to check out our website, which is really what we're basing this all around, komusports.blogspot.com. We're posting pictures, videos, anything we can find up there to help you expand uh, your following of Mid-Missouri High School basketball. Absolutely. As much stuff as we can get on there. We hope to see you uh, next week, and uh, thanks for uh, joining us. <laughs>